Hey everybody! <laughs> I guess you see I'm here without Randall right now. He's actually behind the camera. Um, we haven't seen you guys in quite a few weeks and so we didn't know what we wanted to put out in a video. Um, we haven't been doing a lot of traveling. We didn't really know what to do. We've got a daughter having a birthday and I was going to bake a cake so Randall said why don't you video the cake and give the recipe out to everybody. So here we are. <laughs> that not everybody out there has the opportunity to have somebody teach them how to cook or how to bake and how to maneuver in a kitchen and so since I've been doing this for quite a few years he decided that maybe it would be a good thing for me to show you guys some of the things that we do and so what we're going to do first is start with a recipe that I have made probably more than a thousand times in my life and uh, I'm going to show you two different ways to make this recipe it's a carrot pineapple cake and I've made it the traditional way over and over and over again. I used to give it as gifts for my kids' teachers. I used to make it for people at church, for my neighbors. And I made it a ton, a ton of times for myself and, and our family. Um, but I'm also going to put a spin on it this time. I'm going to make the original one. Then I'm going to follow that up with one that's made with whole wheat flour and stevia rather than real sugar and white flour. And we'll see how it turns out. I've never done it before, so it'll be an experiment for me as well. Okay. So the first thing we have to do is preheat the oven to 350 degrees. And then I'm going to sift all of my dry ingredients into a bowl. So the recipe is actually going to be in the description down below so you guys know the measurements and we'll pop something up on the screen here as well to show you. But first is our flour. Then we have sugar. baking powder, baking soda, cinnamon, and salt. And I'm just going to sift those things all together. It doesn't take long at all. And get down to the end. Sometimes it works better just to pat it with your hand than to try to turn it. And then after you've got those things sifted, we're going to add in our wet ingredients, which is our carrot, our pineapple, vegetable oil, so I've got two eggs. and a teaspoon of vanilla. Now I know in the recipe that I've got down there it states that you're supposed to put this in the bowl and mix it with an electric mixer for two minutes where most of the time that is required. For this particular cake, the way I make it, I have found I do better just to mix it in the bowl. Um, I'll, I'll get into some other recipes later and how important it is to follow the directions exactly. But this one I've changed up a little bit. The recipe also says that it needs to go in a 9 by 9 by 2 inch pan. I actually bake it in a bump pan and so that's why I mix it a little differently. As I just mix everything until it's all good and, and moist. Thank you. 
and this is what it's going to look like when you get it all mixed up. And then I used a bump pan. I spray it with a baking spray. This one's Baker's Joy. I've used many different brands, so that's not important. It's just a, a baking spray that has flour in it. You just spray that pan lightly. If you don't have a baking spray, you can actually grease that pan with a little bit of a vegetable shortening and then uh, sprinkle some flour in there around and make it nonstick as well. You pour your batter into the pan. all of that batter in there. Spread the batter out pretty evenly. And this is a fairly thick batter. It's not going to run. It, it's, it's relatively thick there. So we just spread it evenly into that bunt pan. So now we just put it in the oven at 350 for about 35 minutes. Okay, our timer's gone off, so here's our cake. Ta-da! We're going to let it cool for just a little while, then we'll turn it out on a plate and we'll give it a try. Okay, got my cake plate. I'm just going to lay it on top of the pan. Flip it over. And there we go. There is our carrot pineapple cake. All ready to eat. Now, the ingredients list, the recipe does say that this is to be made in a loaf pan, like I said earlier. I like it better in the butt pan. The recipe does also say that you can frost it with a cream cheese frosting if you like. I prefer it to not be so sweet, but it definitely would be good with a cream cheese frosting on top if that's what you decided to do. So here's our two cakes. They're finally finished. This is the one that we made first, and it is made with traditional all-purpose flour and regular sugar. I decided to make this one out of a whole wheat flour, and um, I used a stevia to sweeten instead of sugar. Whole wheat flour in the same amount as the regular flour, and stevia the same amount as I would use for the regular sugar. Everything else was the same, and as you can see, the one with the real sugar is a little darker. The one with the stevia and the whole wheat is a little bit lighter in color. The one with stevia and whole wheat also didn't rise up as much as the other one. So now we're going to cut them and see what they look like on the inside. So here's a slice of our original with sugar and regular flour. And here is a slice of the whole wheat and stevia. On the inside, the appearance is very similar. It's about the same. Um, the one with stevia and whole wheat is a little bit grainier. Uh, it didn't hold together quite as much. And so it's a little bit of a different texture. But we're going to taste them now and see what they taste like. The one with the stevia is a little bit of a drier texture, but the flavor is fantastic. And the traditional, that was my normal moist cake. If you like a spice cake or a carrot cake, you're going to love it. Okay, to wrap everything up, guys, I made two cakes today. Same recipe, a little bit of a different ingredient to each. One is no sugar added and whole wheat. One is regular with sugar added. They both turned out fantastic. 
Um, obviously, the one with sugar I've made millions of times, and so it's tried and true. It's always perfect. The one with no sugar is a little crumbly, but it works. The batter on the one with no sugar with the, with the stevia in it um, was a little bit drier, so I did add a little bit of extra pineapple juice to that one just to loosen up the batter a little bit. But I baked it the same way, same amount of time as the original. Like I said, they both turned out great. If you have any questions about them, drop me a, a line down in the messages. Send me a message. Reach out if you make it and you love it. If you make it and you don't love it, let me know. I'd love to hear how it turns out for you. If I can ever help you with anything, let me know. I've got two eggs. Woo -hoo. Let me do that again. Can you cut that back in? And then you just pour your batter into the pan. Just like that. Ready to do that. Yep. Are you recording me eating cake? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why? Because I can. <laughs> mm.